Hey, it's Mr. Lineski here with Unit 2, Section 2. We are continuing our conversation on conditional statements. Um, so let's get started. Um, last section, we looked at a conditional statement, which is typically in the form if P, then Q. So symbolically, uh, we would write that out as if P, then Q. So the example that I have here is if the measure of angle A is 35, then angle A is an acute angle. So that is very much a true statement, because anything less than 90 degrees is acute. Um, what we're allowed to do is talk about something called related conditionals, which are the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive. So a converse um, is formed by exchanging the hypothesis and the conclusion. So instead of P implies Q, it now becomes Q implies P. So what I want to kind of point out here, and I'll use the highlighter, is my hypothesis is A is 35 degrees, and my conclusion is A is an acute angle. And if you take a look at what happened when I flip that, it still starts with if, and it says A is an acute angle, then A is 35. So they flipped P and Q. Um, and so the hint there is that if you're doing a converse, you switch. Um, if you take a look at the inverse, the inverse is formed by negating both the hypothesis and conclusion of the conditional. So symbolically, that looks like this. So there's like a little squiggle line ah, uh, that goes in front of each letter. And when it says negate, that just means that you're putting the word not somewhere in the problem. So if you take a look, we're still going back to our original P and Q um, from the conditional. So when I negate A is 35 degrees, I'm saying A is not 35 degrees. Uh, when I negate uh, A, A is an acute angle, I'm saying A is not an acute angle. So inverse is when we negate. Contrapositive is formed by negating both the hypothesis hypothesis and the conclusion of the converse of the conditional. Um, and so what that looks like is we basically are switching and negating. So it becomes not Q implies not P. So if you take a look here, we have A is not an acute angle. Um, and then therefore A is not 35. So that's switch and negate. So real quickly, I just want to go through and talk about the truth values here. If A is an acute angle, then A is 35. That's actually a false statement. Just because A is an acute angle doesn't mean it has to be 35 degrees. It can be any other number. Uh, if A is not 35 degrees, then A is not an acute angle. That's also false. Because uh, again, it can be sort of any other number. Um, if A is not an acute angle, then A is not 35 degrees. That is true. If something is not acute, it can't be 35 degrees. So real quick, I'm going to sing a little song here to help you remember uh, which thing goes with the proper related conditional. So the song goes like this, and I will only sing it one time. Converse, inverse, contrapositive, switch, negate, switch, and negate. So if you can remember that little ditty, uh, you'll be just fine here. So let's take a look at our example. We want to write the converse inverse contrapositive for the following true statement. Then we want to determine the truth value of the statement. If a statement is false, give a counterexample. Remember from last section, counterexample proves something is wrong. So here's our statement. If an animal is a bat, then it can fly. What I would recommend, put in your P and Q. So my P here is an animal is a bat. My Q is it can fly. So the converse, converse is when we switch, Q implies P. So what would that look like? If an animal can fly, then it is a bat. Is that a true statement? No, it is not. So just because an animal can fly doesn't necessarily mean it's a bat. It could be a bird. Inverse, inverse is when we negate. So what would that look like? If an animal is not a bat, then it cannot fly. Well. Again, that's false. If an animal's not a bat, then it cannot fly. That's saying a bird. A bird is not a bat, but a bird can fly. And then our contrapositive, that is when we switch and negate. And what that looks like is an animal cannot fly, then it is not a bat. So if an animal cannot fly, can we say that it's a bat? Uh, that is true. 
Now again, bat meaning the animal bat. By conditional statements. By conditional statements um, are when a conditional statement and its converse, so converse is when we switch, so this and this, um, are both true. If both of these statements end up being true, then we can write what's called a biconditional statement. Biconditional statements typically include the phrase if and only if. So the hint to write a good biconditional is if we have an if p then q statement, drop the if and then from the conditional and add if and only if between p and q. So what that looks like is I gave you two scenarios here of which both of these are true. The conditional states if two lines intersect to form a right angle then they are perpendicular. That is very true. The converse, if I switch those, says if two lines are perpendicular then they intersect to form a right angle. That is also true. So how do I write that as a biconditional? Well, drop if and then from the conditional and put if and only if in between P and Q. So if this is my P and this is my Q, I'm essentially dropping this, dropping this, and putting if and only if in the middle there. So two lines intersect to form a right angle if and only if they are perpendicular. Now, the cool thing about biconditionals is you can actually write that the opposite way. I could also say um, two lines are perpendicular if and only if they intersect to form right angles. So that works too. All right, here are some symbols that you should know um, going into our logic unit. So this little arrow here means implies. Typically it follows then. This little double-sided arrow is if and only if. These three dots stand for therefore. This V means or. This upside down V means and. And that little squiggle from what we learned at the beginning means to negate something. Um, the easy way to remember the difference between these two is the upside down V kind of looks like you're making the letter A for and. So just remember it that way. All right, so um, here are some problems in which you would use those symbols where we kind of give you a scenario symbolically and then you just have to write out sort of what they would interpret to. Um, so this first one, we're allowing P to represent the phrase, it is raining. Q represents the power goes out, and R represents the fall festival is canceled. So three letters now, P, Q, and R. So here's what that would look like. P implies Q, so we would write that out as, if it is raining, then the power goes out. This one here is P and Q implies R. So we can say, if it is raining, and the power goes out, then the fall festival is canceled. This one here, we are negating. P implies negated R. So remember, negate means that we're either, we're sort of doing the opposite. Um, so if it is not raining, then the fall, fa fall festival is not canceled. And then finally, it looks like we have a biconditional here. So remember, biconditional means we drop if, we drop then, and we put if and only if in the middle. So it is raining if and only if the fall festival is canceled. Another way we could write that is the fall festival is canceled if and only if it is raining. All right, that is it for section two. Thank you for watching. I know it, and now you know it.